What is up guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day and I am a college student and SOC analyst. And on this channel, I talk about cybersecurity, college, certifications, and internships. And today's video is gonna be about how I became a SOC analyst at 19. Uh, but I actually got the offer when I was 18, but I started when I was 19. So however you want to define that, um, I'm actually still 19 right now. So I'm just going to be giving you a context of how I started in cybersecurity right from high school and how I was introduced to cybersecurity up until the point where I became a SOC analyst and how things are going so far currently as a SOC analyst and maybe even talk about future plans, you never know. But with all that said, let's dive right into the video. If you like my content and you want to see more of these videos, please make sure to smash the like button as well as subscribe. Also, be sure to share my videos with your friends, families, whoever might be interested in cybersecurity and might find something of value. So, with all that said, let's just get into the video. So, uh, my journey to cybersecurity pretty much started back in high school, which was like two, three years ago. I can't even remember. But um, in, in high school, I was introduced to a cybersecurity club where um, this teacher was having an initiative where she wanted to start introducing students to cybersecurity. And um, she was hoping that by the time we were done with our cyber, with our high school program, we would be done with the Cisco Cyber Ops Associate. Um, this was like in 2017 or so. Um, and this was a really, really great in initiative by the teacher. She actually had a collaboration with the Cisco Academy. And we had these courses where we're going through different things in relation to cybersecurity. But that was pretty shortly for me because I didn't spend so much time at that high school. So... That was kind of, it was like a three month period where I was actually learning about cybersecurity in high school. And after that, I was pretty much not learning anything about cybersecurity. Then the following year, I graduated high school. Um, I, I graduated high school when I was 16. And so I really didn't know what I wanted to do um, in college. I wasn't even sure I was interested in cybersecurity as much. I was also thinking about software engineering and all of that stuff. So I took a gap year from high school and started college um, a year after. Uh, when I was 17. So during my gap year period, I was pretty much trying different things. I was trying to learn about coding and programming. That wasn't really fun. That I didn't really enjoy that during that period. So I wasn't sure I wanted to do like software engineering um, at the point. But after a lot of deliberation and thought, I was also dabbling around with like learning about cybersecurity, but not like really, uh, you know, immersing myself as much into it. But I was here, here learning things here and there through YouTube and whatnot. And so when I eventually decided to major um, in something in my community college, I decided to choose cybersecurity and starting college in 2019, September 2019, I started my program. Uh, my associate's degree in cybersecurity. This is like what's really got me deeper, I guess, into cybersecurity. So starting starting my associate's program in cybersecurity, September 2019. Uh, at this point, my plan was just to go through with the program, finish my associate's, and then uh, move over to a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. Um, I wasn't really planning on getting any certifications or my mind never even went to internships at all. Like I didn't even know, I don't even think I knew what an internship was at that time. So I got started with my programs. Um, I actually started with the Network Plus class um, at my community college. And if you've watched my Network Plus video, you would know that that class was not fun at all. I didn't really learn much from the class. I didn't enjoy the class at all. Uh, my plan was actually to do the Network Plus later on and you know study on my own and did the network plus at the soonest but i didn't end up doing the network plus until about a year later which was last year uh, but starting the program i didn't really enjoy uh, networking or network the network plus at the time and so i, I you know i just kept procrastinating taking the network plus and i did like an it essentials class where um that i didn't enjoy that either because like the teacher was so not into the class and i'm not even i'm not blaming the teacher or anything like that because you know I, I at this point i don't really expect school to be like you know the the entire navigation for my career so by the same time like the teacher just didn't make the class interesting and yeah i just i i wasn't i didn't really have that much motivation i guess for cyber security and whatnot but uh starting january 2020 i started looking into getting into it um i was actually looking into getting a help disk position or like a IT support position. And I felt like having the A plus would help me with getting into IT. And I started studying for the A plus like right before my 18th birthday, January, 2020. And uh, studied for a while, studied for about a month. Uh, I have a video about how I failed the A plus and how I passed the A plus. So you can definitely check that out and you know, learn about the whole story. So long story short, I took the A plus 
um, earlier that LA 2020 failed it and I was devastated. I didn't I didn't want to try it again. I didn't want to. I was just like, yeah, I'm done with this. So that was when the pandemic hit. And I must tell you, like the pandemic was like the springboard was a major springboard for my career. Um, it was where I pretty much learned everything, like all of the basics that really got my career started. And so when the pandemic hit, um, that was when my dad was like, hey, you know, you're never going to have this time um, of your life again. Like, you're never going to have this much free time. Uh, you're never going to have, like, an opportunity to just be at home because, you know, we couldn't go out during that time. We couldn't go out during the pandemic because of quarantine. And, you know, you could actually utilize this free time to try to study up again and probably pass the exam. So I took, it as, I took his advice, started studying for the A+, plus again, um, March, April 2020, attended the A+, plus and I was done with the core one and core two by July of 2020. So that was like between April and July. That was like a four month period, if I'm not wrong. April, May, June, July. Yeah, like I started like literally the first day of April. So I guess you can count April. So it was like a four month period of getting of the A plus and like that really like motivated me so much. And at this point I was like, well, the number plus shouldn't be so far off at this time and mind you right before uh, that period i was doing a ccna class um, at my community college this was my second semester so this was between january and uh january and april because that was like that was like a uh, like a flex class so it was like a four month class and like this was a really really amazing class for me it was like where i learned a lot about networking and like really gave me like a solid foundation and knowledge of how networking works um the teacher was a really really amazing teacher so uh, i was able to learn a lot about networking through this class she this teacher actually really made this class like really interesting and I was able to like grasp all of the concept that she was explaining in this class and I think I should have taken my, my CCNA at that time because the, the knowledge was like super super fresh like we were doing labs um, all the time um, you know we could have we had access to the Sesco racks at the school so we could like you know do the labs anytime so I should have really taken my CCNA at the time but um, I'm probably going to take it like later on uh, this year but all that aside I think that really gave me a really solid understanding of networking that helped in getting my Network Plus. Um, Network Plus was a beast of its own. Um, I'm never gonna front on that. So I studied for Network Plus from, I guess, July through August, and I passed the Network Plus, and that was like really, really amazing. That was, Network Plus was like this monster that I couldn't seem to, you know, to fight because like, I felt like, because of I had that experience with the teacher that, you know, didn't, make me have so much like interest in networking but having the other teacher that really really changed my my mindset and my perspective and my understanding of networking was really important so between the time of my a plus of getting my a plus and my network plus i was actively applying for internships for like uh cyber security internships it internships and um, hopefully to get a summer internship or to get a fall internship so um i knew very much well that i was horrible at interviewing at least for like i guess cybersecurity positions or it positions um and like this was my first experience in actually interviewing properly for i guess um co corporate jobs so i just was in inexperienced and out of like 150 160 applications i probably only got like three interviews of which i totally bombed to like i those interviews were horrible. Like, I know I didn't really do well in those interviews looking back now, because at that time I thought I was really doing well, but looking back now, I know I didn't do well. But when I got the opportunity for my last internship, I was determined to actually make the most of it. Like this, I was like, I was, I was ready to do whatever it would take to get that position. So if you wanna see more about my my internship experience from during the interview, how I got interviewed, all of that, I'll leave a card to it up here. I also have a, a playlist of like my internship stories. So you, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So you can check out those videos and get more insight of how the internship thing went and how I went about getting the internship. But I was determined to actually, you know, make the most of that opportunity for the interview because Truth be told, if you get an opportunity for an interview, the interview is pretty much the gate between you and that job. So like, I was determined to do whatever it took to, um, you know, get through that gate and get that internship. 
So I made sure to like, you know, tell them everything I was working on. At this time, I was like really, you know, getting into it. I was studying for Network Plus at, the t at this time. So it was between that period of like uh, the A Plus and Network Plus. I, I already had the A Plus. And, you know, I, I talked about my networking experience with um, my classes. I guess like, because I feel like networking was important for cybersecurity. So I really emphasized on that. I talked about my A Plus, talked about uh, working on my home lab, all of that stuff. And just kind of, sold myself for the interview, uh, sold myself for the, the position during the interview. And I was really able to answer like a lot of the questions they, ac they a asked me. And thankfully, I eventually got the internship. And that was like what really got me started in cybersecurity. That was the internship that got me started in cybersecurity. So this internship started in August of 2019. And August of 2019 through March of this year. So that was like a six, seven month period. And this was like a period of like learning a lot. I didn't stop learning when I got the internship. I like when I got the internship, literally the first day, um, like a cyber, uh, the cybersecurity engineer that was I was shadowing gave me a security plus textbook and was like, hey, you should study for a security plus because it will help you in getting up to speed with this position and you know, down the line of your career. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll study for a security plus. So, um, and I, I just, I, I literally passed the network plus right before I got the offer for the internship. So I only had the security plus left. And honestly, when I was like starting off with the A plus, I used to see the network plus and security plus as these beasts, like these beasts of exams that I couldn't, that would be so hard for me to surmount. But like getting to study for them, I just realized how easy they were. I don't wanna say they're easy, but like, I just realized that they weren't that much of a big deal. But when you eventually get to that point, like you start seeing it better and it makes a lot more sense. So I started studying for the Security Plus literally the first month of my internship. And so between August and November, I was able to get the Security Plus. And like Security Plus was like um, a different beast of its own. Like I, I, I was super busy at this time because I was having my internship and I was doing school full time as well as other activities that I'm part of. So I, I, I barely had any time for like like studying but i was able to like find time for studying so it was like a lot of sleepless nights and it's i'm not gonna lie ever since i started like my career in cybersecurity, it's been like a lot of sleepless nights but that's a story for another day so um the security plus really really got me into like you know understanding the fundamentals of security i mean before security plus i was learning about security maybe through like articles youtube videos or whatnot but security plus laid that foundation for General, the generalities of cybersecurity um, and built off of like the A plus and Network Plus. So having the A plus and Network Plus was pretty much like 40 or 50% of security plus. Plus like I was already doing my internship and I was already like immersed in security. So like I, I would say at the time that I was taking security plus, I probably was around like 55, 60% of security plus material before taking it so it was a lot easier a lot more easier for me to take it and if you want to take out my a plus network plus security plus videos i will leave a link to the playlist in the description below you can check my a plus video my network plus video my security plus video also did a video about how i feel the a plus i also did a video about my entire CompTIA trifecta experience the three a plus network plus security plus exams together my experience with that all of my computer videos are in the playlist, so be sure to check it out. I'm probably gonna get, you know, a tip or two there that could probably help you if you're studying for the exam. So that was, you know, how I got the A plus number plus security plus video. Um, this was how I got the A plus number plus security plus certifications. So within like from April through November, it was like fully studying for certifications and like non-stop. Like I was constantly studying for this, these certifications back to back, back to back non-stop and then I started my internship. So after my internship, I kind of like slowed down on like certifications. I wanted to pursue more certifications, but at, th at this point I was like more interested in like building my skills. And up until this point, it's really been more about like s skills and actually understanding um, how to do like the job in cybersecurity, well, like whatever cybersecurity job. And I kind of like backed up from certifications a little bit, at least for this period of time um and just really focus on my skills like i've said so during my internship like i've i learned a lot of things during my internship because 
I was able to do so many things. I, I'm so happy that they gave me the liberty to be part of like different pro projects and different activities. Like I would ask, hey, uh, can I be a part of this project? And you know, can I participate in this? Can I watch while you do this? And another thing was my manager was also really um, happy to um, allow me to be part of all these projects. Like sometimes I wouldn't even ask them like, oh yeah, I want to make sure that Day is going to be part of this project. Um, please make sure to include him, you know, um, for the meetings or whatever it was, it was like just keen on making sure that I was learning everything, like literally everything that we were doing. He made sure that I was part of it. And I'm really, really grateful for that because that opened me to so many things, like so many experiences and um, especially in like the enterprise environment. Like I, if, if I was like just limited to one thing specifically, I probably wouldn't you know have had like that general experience that I had. But everybody at the internship, everybody I worked with was open to like giving me the opportunity to try different things. And I think that's one thing that like a lot of uh, positions, like I guess an internship don't really allow for. It's like sometimes you're just limited to one thing or you're not doing anything much at all. But this during this internship, I was like, I barely had like any idle time. Like there were days where things were slow, but I always had work to do like and I'm just really grateful for the experience because I got to try my hand out in several things that have you know really helped me so far and gonna definitely help me along my career so back to like my, my internship uh, which I'm still talking about the internship was a six month period uh, was was for a six month period which was from April through March but I always felt like they were willing to retain me beyond that um, even up until the internship ended I knew they were they they wanted to retain me beyond the six month period because the company actually does retain their interns beyond the six month period so I could have had the internship for you know throughout my entire college career but for me I I I've always had like the mindset of diversifying like my experience because yeah I did get experience from there learn different things but now that I'm a stock analyst, I'm getting like a different set of experiences. So like my my whole mindset was, yeah, I could be here for the next, you know, you know, one year and learning more about what I'm doing, probably be a part of many more projects that we were working on, or different things like that, move up or whatnot. But I was more interested in like diversifying my experience. So that was another thing that I considered in you know, moving from the internship into finding a different position. So um around like middle around like uh the fourth or fifth month i started like looking into other internships so i was looking for summer internships fall internships and just kind of applying around interviewing another thing that got me into uh, moving from my cybersecurity internship to becoming a SOC analyst was number one i never really i was really really keen on like getting a full-time position but my mentor was like no, you're actually like you you could probably qualify for a full time position, especially with your experience at your internship. Like you should probably apply for a full time position. So I was like, uh, OK, cool. So I, I, aside from applying from aside from applying for food for internships, I started applying for full time positions. And I was just doing that like I was just I wasn't like I didn't have like any major expectations. My main goal was like if I was to ever get an interview for a full time position, I would use that opportunity to learn about what employers are looking for for full time positions and stuff like that and probably build my skills. But I, 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 I felt like I was going to be better off for the internship. But at this point, I knew like I could I could pretty much do anything because I like my internship was pretty much almost a full time job, even though I wasn't working full time. But I was able, I, I know I could combine this with school and whatnot because I'm still in school and I'm still studying for my associates. So I started applying for internships as well as full time positions. And then I got the interview for my current position. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. I got an interview for this position. Uh, I guess I might just use this opportunity to learn more about, I guess, what it would take to become a stock analyst. So I was, I, I studied a little bit, like, you know, at this point I was like doing like labs and mind you, this entire time, you know, I told you guys, I kind of slowed down uh, on certification. So I was mainly and majorly focusing on labs. So I was working on range force, try hack me, um, like any free online labs like I could do working on my home lab, home lab. And I was, I, I, I was building like different like home lab configurations. 
apart from what I was actually like filming of, on YouTube and whatnot. So like I was like focusing on like building skills with like Sims, um, learning about like different attacks, which I'm not still really good at till now. But I was just a lot like more focusing on my skills, like on building like my skills through different labbing materials. So at this point, I was like, I guess I could look at the job description and kind of understand what they were looking for. And I applied and yeah, I got an interview. So interview day came and this interview was like the most technical interview that I, I've ever had, like in like my entire life. Like they like immediately I got into the interview, interview after like um, introductions and everything like that. The interview went straight into like asking me like technical questions. Like it was like, okay, I see your experience. I see your certifications. You should know this. And just, like straight off like fired off on all of those questions. Like barely even asked me anything about my experience or anything. Cause I felt like all of my experience was like already listed in my resume. So like they already knew where I'm coming from. This is my education, some of my, my certifications, some of my internship experience. So I was like, yeah, you should know this if you're if you have this experience and if you want to become a sock analyst. So they went up for the questions, asked me all the questions and surprisingly to myself, I was able to answer like 90% 90, 90 of those questions. Yeah, there were some questions like I wasn't able to properly answer or, pro or I wasn't able to properly give my thought process on how I would respond to a certain, you know, incident or a certain event. But generally like 90 percent of the questions were really like i was able to really answer those questions and i was like and i, I didn't realize that because i haven't i didn't really had a, a situation where i had to i guess like test myself or test my skills or test my knowledge and this situation really really showed me how far i had come from like my cybersecurity internship to where i currently was at that time so like that was a really amazing like that was like one of the best interview experiences that i ever had it was like one of the best interview experiences so after like waiting like a couple of days um asking for references and stuff like that they sent me the offer i was like oh wow <laughs> like i was super surprised because i wasn't expecting to like get like a full-time position at this point in my career i think that was the week before i turned 19 and i was like super surprised i was like so grateful to god because like i couldn't have done this first of all i couldn't have done all of this without god if i wouldn't have the wisdom or like the strength or whatever it is like that eventually got me in this position without god and i was like so grateful and that was how i became a sock analyst and i started the position i guess like three four weeks was it three weeks later on and here i am today um still a sock analyst and i'm really enjoying the experience it's a lot it's a lot of learning that i have to do um and really really continuous like building up my skills and i think one thing that's really carried me so far is like i i'm constantly eager to learn new things eager to build my skills eager to figure out what it is like i don't understand and uh constantly just making sure that i'm, I'm on my toes and just learning new things i think that's just really what ha has carried me so far because i just never stopped learning like even during my during my internship when i was learning a lot at the internship i would still go back home and still continue learning like i would like oh i'm learning all of this really amazing stuff in my internship it doesn't mean that i i stopped like when i would go back home stay up all night still try to figure something out still learn something new and i think that really really helped me a lot um to where i am and i'm i I'm, i must tell you guys like being at this point in my career so early it's a steep learning curve and i find myself constantly like i said having to learn something new having to figure something out and truth is i i enjoy it and that's like the thing about cybersecurity. if you enjoy what you do and if you really really have that thirst for continuous learning it will take you so far and that's i think that's like been a lot one of the major factors that have helped me to where i am because i find myself constantly learning from the moment that i started studying for my A plus last year, it has like been nonstop. Like I would literally, I've always had something to learn every single time. And as a matter of fact, even over the next 12, 18, 36 months, I have plans for things that I want to learn because I know like this journey is like a continuous learning journey. And like, this is not, this is just my starting point. Like I'm just literally, like generally I have like, I'm, I'm like in the first like seven, eight months of my cybersecurity career, like my first year of my cybersecurity career. And I have, a, I know I have a lot of things that I still need to learn. And I'm happy to learn those things. I'm happy to ask questions. I'm happy to not know and, you know, 
be humble enough to ask people for help and for advice and seek mentorship and you know uh, just really continuously build myself. Another thing about me is like I'm not able to aggressively network like other people who might be more extroverted. Like I'm more in introverted, but another thing that's really really helped me is like being like super super attentive and looking at what has gotten certain people to where they are and trying to apply those things to myself. So I'm not the kind of person that's like so extroverted. So I'm not the kind of person that would reach out to people to talk to them about where how they've gotten to where they are but i can see like their online you know persona i can see their online trail and look at how they've gotten to where they are and linkedin is a really great way to kind of study people and see how they've gotten into their current position so what i do is like i go on linkedin look at people that have job titles that i i want to get to and kind of look at look at how they got to where they are look at certifications or trainings they took their education their experiences, you know, their work experiences and different things that have helped them so far. I look at like their post activity and it might seem like stalking, but I think it's really, really more so understanding different people's journey and aggregating that into defining how your journey is. So like, I think that's one of the things that really helped me and things that I actually recommend to people is like, look at other people that are where you want to be and not just one person, like several people, and continuous, continuously do it, and look at how it, what has gotten them to where they are, and study that, like combine all of those results together, and use that to define your own plan. And also, you know, look at what really interests you, and how you can incorporate all of those different experiences and journey into your own path, and use that to you know continuously work on building yourself. Also, I also like talk about getting a mentor. I have had like mentors that have really, really helped me getting to where I am right now because like if my mentor never told me that hey you should actually look into applying for full-time positions I probably wouldn't I probably would but I probably wouldn't at the same time so having that person like push you uh that sees your potential and you know pushes you to where where it pushes you to where you want to be and where they see you at is also really important so definitely like look into getting the mentor and above all like for me like i'm a like spiritual and really religious person and like i i find that god is like at the center of everything so i put all of my my efforts and all of my my life into god's hands if you're a spiritual or religious person it's also important to understand that it's not just all about you it's also about following god's will for your life and that's really really helped me so far and yeah that's my entire story about became a suck analyst at 19 um i'm super i'm excited to be where i'm at like my career is so excited and i'm happily learning new things and it's awesome and i'm really really grateful for where i am right now and i hope this video was really insightful for someone out there or inspiring for to someone out there and i hope you can take like you know little little tads and little bits of my experiences and you know use that for your own self and for your own growth and probably help you get your first cybersecurity position or internship or so I'll handle this position, whatever it is. Um, but I really hope this video inspires someone out there. And yeah, if you like this video, please make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. Check out my other videos. You're going to definitely find something of value there. And thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next video.